Question 1. A woman in her late twenties presents to the emergency department disoriented and confused. She is unable to remember where she lived or even her phone number. She is admitted for observation and testing and begins to hallucinate and salivate excessively. On the east coast of the United States, what is the most common reservoir of this disease? A. Bat. B. Cat. C. Dog. D. Fox. E. Raccoon. The correct answer is E. This patient has rabies, which exhibits these neurologic symptoms. In the eastern United States, the primary reservoir is raccoons. Question 2. An 11-month-old infant was brought to the emergency department with difficulty breathing and wheezing. History and physical examination reveal a slight fever, cough, and rhinorrhea that began about two days before. Analysis of the sputum reveals normal flora with the presence of giant multinucleated cells. Which of the following is the most likely cause? A. B. 19. B. Influenza. C. Parinfluenza. D. Measles. E. Respiratory syncytial virus. The correct answer is E. An infant with difficulty breathing, wheezing, and giant multinucleated cells, syncytia, is likely to have respiratory syncytial virus. B19, choice A, and influenza, choice B, would not show giant multinucleated cells, and B19 does not usually cause breathing difficulty. Parinfluenza, choice C, causes croup, which exhibits the swelling of the larynx and the seal-like barking cough. There is no mention of rash or coplic spots, which would indicate the measles, choice D. Question 3. A 37-year-old executive for a local health maintenance organization comes to your office because he has developed multiple blister-like lesions on his penis over the last one to two days. They are somewhat painful, and he is worried that he has AIDS. He denies homosexuality and intravenous drug abuse and had an HIV test prior to his marriage three years ago. He reports several similar episodes several years ago when he worked as a photographer in Nepal. He was never told what they were, and they resolved over several days without any treatment. His physical examination is remarkable only for the presence of 6 to 8 vesicular lesions 3 to 4 mm in diameter on the glands of the penis. There is no crusting, drainage, or bleeding. The lesions are moderately tender and there is mild inguinal adenopathy bilaterally. How does the causal agent produce its messenger RNA? A. By producing a positive sense intermediate. B. By direct translation from the genome. C. By transcription from proviral DNA D by producing a negative sense intermediate. E. By transcribing from the genomic DNA. The correct answer is E. The virus is highest foul 2, a herpes virus, which is its virus that uses the mechanisms of our own cells to transcribe an RNA strand from its genomic DNA and use the transcribed RNA as a messenger RNA. Question 4. Several individuals in the central United States from the ages of 5 to 25 have come down with symptoms of nausea, vomiting, and swelling of the parotid glands. Which of the following can be a complication of the disease? A. Guillain-Barré syndrome. B. Glomerulonephritis. C. Orchitis. D. Multiple sclerosis. E. Ray syndrome. The correct answer is C. The disease is mumps. The complication often seen in adult males is orchitis, which can lead to sterility. Question 5. In the U.S., a baby has the greatest chance of acquiring which virus in utero? A. Cytomegalovirus. B. Hepatitis B virus, C. Herpes simplex virus, D. Respiratory syncytial virus, E. Rubella virus. The correct answer is A. CMV is an extremely common virus and crosses the placenta, oftentimes without causing obvious symptoms. Fortunately, rubella, which is highly teratogenic particularly in early pregnancy, is generally prevented by routine vaccination in childhood or at least 16 weeks prior to pregnancy. A small percentage of hepatitis B infections may occur in utero. Hyasfau 2 will only cross the placenta if the mother acquires herpes for the first time during her pregnancy. RSV and other respiratory viruses will not. Other viruses that can cross the placenta include Coxsackie B, HIV, and B19. Question 6. Which of these viruses has RNA for both its genome and replicative intermediate? A. Cytomegalovirus, B. Hepadenovirus, C. Retroviruses, D. Togaviruses, E. Poxvirus. The correct answer is D. Cytomegalovirus, Hepandavirus, and Poxvirus are all DNA. Viruses and not RNA. Retrovirus is an RNA virus but replicates through its DNA, so it also is not the correct answer. 
Toga is a positive RNA virus that replicates through a negative RNA intermediate and has no DNA, therefore, it's the correct answer. Question 7. What is the most common lab testing method for diagnosing infectious mononucleosis? A. The monospot test to detect EBV-specific antibody. B. An assay for Epstein-Barr nuclear antigen. C. The presence of atypical lymphocytes in the blood establishes the etiology. D. A test for heterophile antibody, which cross-reacts with antigens found on a variety of animal red blood cells. E. A simple procedure is done to isolate EBV from saliva, blood, or lymphoid tissue. The correct answer is D. The monospot is the most commonly used test for the diagnosis of infectious mononucleosis caused by EBV. However, it does not detect EBV-specific antibody. It instead detects heterophile antibody, which is nonspecific in that it may be present in different organisms and individuals and it cross-reacts with many animal RBCs. Epstein-Barr nuclear antigen test is not routinely run in the diagnosis of mononucleosis. Atypical lymphocytes are found in mononucleosis caused by EBV and CMV, but CMV is heterophile antibody negative. Isolation of EBV is cumbersome and laborious, and would not distinguish previous infections from current active ones. Question 8. What virus is noted for genetic reassortment, which leads to major pandemics about once every 10 to 11 years? A. Adenovirus, B. Herpes virus, C. Human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, D. Influenza virus, E. Polio virus. The correct answer is D. The segmented influenza viruses may undergo recombination with a similar animal virus. This leads to drastic genetic change and pandemics result from the fact that there is no underlying herd immunity to the new viral entity. Question 9. What virus is noted for such a high incidence of genetic drift that more than one antigenic variant can be isolated from most infected individuals who have high viral titers? A. Adenovirus. B. Herpes virus. C. Human immunodeficiency virus, HIVD, influenza virus. E. Polio virus. The correct answer is C. HIV. It is this genetic drift that makes it difficult for the body to fight off HIV and has complicated the development of an effective vaccine. Genetic drift is due to minor mutational change and is possible with any organism but best described in HIV. Question 10. A 19 year old male college student reports sore throat and extreme fatigue following even normal non taxing tasks like getting dressed and going down to breakfast. He tells you that he has been sick for several weeks, that he has been feverish, and that his girlfriend now appears to be getting the same thing. His tonsils are inflamed with a white exudated hearing, cervical lymphadenopathy is prominent, as is splenomegaly. The most likely causal agent is A. SNA, naked icosahedral virus. B. SNA, naked icosahedral virus. C. SNA, enveloped complex virus. D. SNA, enveloped icosahedral virus. The correct answer is D. Both the symptomology, length of infection, and the epidemiological clues, college student, age 19, has given it to his girlfriend, strongly suggests that this is EBV, which is a herpes virus. Question 11. Cataracts and patent ductus arteriosus in a newborn suggest in utero infection with what viral family? A. Adenovirus, B. Paramyxovirus, C. Parvovirus, D. Picornovirus, E. Reovirus, F. Togovirus. The correct answer is F. The description fits congenital rubella, a togovirus, which is an enveloped positive sense RNA virus that is not segmented. Question 12. What is the primary means of spread for measles? A. Animal bite. B. Fecal oral. C. Fomite spread. D. Respiratory droplet spread. E. Sexual contact. The correct answer is D. If you have any trouble, Think about which of these viruses has respiratory symptoms, in this case, pneumonia. Question 13. How are human papilloma virus type 4 warts spread? A. Animal bite. B. Fecal oral. C. Fomite spread. D. Respiratory droplet spread. E. Sexual contact. The correct answer is C. Remember that type 4 strains cause common warts, and these are largely transmitted by fomites or direct contact. Question 14. A 15-year-old member of the high school swim team notices painless umbilicated cutaneous lesions on the toes. Large eosinophilic cytoplasmic inclusions are present in the affected epithelia. What is the most likely causal agent? A. Adenovirus. B. B19 virus. C. Molluscum contagiosum virus. D. 
herpes simplex virus. E. Human papilloma virus. The correct answer is C. This describes the typical presentation of molluscum contagiosum, which is commonly acquired through small breaks in the skin in environments where moisture keeps the virus viable, swimming pools, showers. Question 15. A bone marrow transplant recipient becomes febrile and hypoxic and chest films demonstrate diffuse interstitial pneumonia. What is the most likely causal agent? A. VK virus. B. Cytomegalovirus. C. Herpes simplex virus. D. Molluscum contagiosum virus. E. Paramyxovirus. F. Varicella zoster virus. The correct answer is B. CMV is the most common viral cause of death in bone marrow transplant patients, causing an interstitial pneumonia. Question 16. A six-month-old infant presents with painless verrucous growths on the laryngeal folds. What is the most likely causal agent? A. B19 virus, B. Cytomegalovirus, C. Herpes simplex virus, D. Human papilloma virus, E. Molluscum contagiosum virus. The correct answer is D. Perinatal infection with human papilloma virus can cause infantile laryngeal warts. Question 17. An obese 32-year-old diabetic woman presents with complaint of red and painful skin in her abdominal skin folds. Examination reveals a creamy white material at the base of the fold. It is erythematous underneath and extends beyond the creamy material. Microscopic examination of the exudate reveals oval budding structures, 3 by 6 micrometers, mixed with more budding elongated forms. The most likely causal agent is A. Aspergillus fumigatus B. Conjuda albicans C. Epidermophyton flocosum D. Microsperm canis E. Swarothrix schenkii The correct answer is B. Cutaneous candidiasis is a problem in skin folds of obese individuals. It is an even greater problem in diabetic patients because of the high sugar levels. Only the members of the genus Conjuda would produce a creamy surface growth. The erythematous base is due to the production of a cytotoxin. Aspergillus, epidermophyton, and microsperm are all monomorphic filamentous fungi and would not fit the description. Sporothrix is found as cigar-shaped budding yeasts but would not clinically present like this. It is traumatically implanted to start subcutaneous infections. Question 18. A 19-year-old migrant worker from the southwestern U.S. is brought to the family doctor complaining of cough, pleuritic chest pain, fever, and malaise. He also complains of a backache and headache. He is found to have an erythematous skin rash on his lower limbs. A chest radiograph reveals several calcifying lesions. Which of the following structures is most likely to be found? A. Broad-based budding yeast. B. Monomorphic encapsulated yeast. C. Non-septate hyphae with broad angles. D. Septate hyphae branching dichotomously at acute angles. E. Ferals with endospores. The correct answer is E. The causal agent is coccidioides imidus. The clues are Southwest U.S., migrant worker, works outside, erythematous skin rash, erythema nodosum. Question 19. An 18-year-old high school student in rural North Mississippi develops fever, cough, and chest pain. The cough, associated with weight loss, persisted. Because of poor performance at football practice, he was advised to see a physician. Lymph node biopsies stained with H and E reveal granulomatous inflammation and macrophages engorged with oval structures measuring 2 to 4 micrometers. Cultures incubated at room temperature grow powdery white colonies, which on microscopic study have tuberculate spores. The high school student most likely acquired the infection from which of the following? A. Desert sand. B. Cat feces. C. Soil enriched with bird excrement. D. Another human via respiratory secretions. E. Contaminated drinking water. The correct answer is C. The clues here are the geography, weight loss, granulomatous, inflammation, and macrophages engorged with oval structures, Rees disease. The colonial appearance and tuberculate spores strongly suggest the causal agent to be histoplasma capsulatum. Histoplasma is acquired from dusty environments containing bird, most often chicken or starling, or bat feces. The areas of highest endemicity are in the great central river beds with bat caves, chicken coops, and starling roosts having extremely high levels. Question 20. A 32-year-old man from the southeastern U.S. is referred to a tertiary care center with chronic pneumonia. He also complains of malaise, weight loss, night sweats, chest pain, breathlessness, and hoarseness. Sputum smear revealed thick-walled, refractile, double-contoured yeast cells. What is the most common site of dissemination for the causal organism? A. Heart. 
B. Liver. C. Mucocutaneous. D. Skin. E. Spleen. The correct answer is D. The causal agent is Blastomyces dermatitis. The clues are southeastern U.S. and a sputum smear revealing thick-walled, refractile, double-contoured yeast cells, another way to say broad-based budding. Remember that the name of the organism contains the site of dissemination. Question 21. A 55-year-old man who recently recovered uneventfully from a heart valve transplant presents to the emergency room with pleuritic chest pain, hemoptysis, fever, and chills. While he is being examined, he has a yocardial infarction and the medical team is unable to revive him. An autopsy revealed septate, acutely branching hyphae in many tissues. Which of the following organisms is most likely to be identified? A. Aspergillus fumigatus. B. Blastomyces dermatitis. C. Cryptococcus neoformans. D. Histoplasma capsulatum. E. Eucor species. The correct answer is A. The clues are immunocompromised, myocardial infarction, and septate acutely branching hyphae in nearly every tissue. Remember, aspergillus is extremely invasive in immunocompromised individuals. Question 22. A 33-year-old HIV-positive man complains of headache and blurred vision. Physical examination reveals papilledema and ataxia. A head CT scan is normal, but CSF obtained by lumbar puncture reveals encapsulated organisms visible by India Inc. Which of the following is true concerning this organism? A. It can also be seen as spaghetti and meatballs on costain. B. It consists of branching septate hyphae. C. It exists as a mycelial form at room temperature and a yeast at 37.0 C, 98.6 FD. It is an encapsulated nondomorphic yeast found worldwide. The correct answer is D. The causal agent is Cryptococcus neoformans. The clues are HIV. Headache and blurred vision, encapsulated organisms in CSF. C. Neoformans is the number one cause of meningitis in AIDS patients. You should know that it is monomorphic. Question 23. A 32-year-old man who has AIDS presents to his physician with progressively increasing dyspnea over the past three weeks. He also complains of a dry, painful cough, fatigue, and low-grade fever. A chest X-ray reveals bilateral symmetrical interstitial and alveolar infiltration. Which of the following agents is the most likely cause? A. Cryptococcus neoformans. B. Cryptosporidium parvum. C. Histoplasma capsulatum. D. Pneumocystis gyrovecchi. E. Toxoplasma gondii. The correct answer is D. The clues are AIDS patient and atypical pneumonia. Pneumocystis gyrovecchi is the hallmark atypical pneumonia of AIDS. Question 24. A 44-year-old woman returns home to New York after a two-week camera safari to East Africa. She started chloroquine antimalarial prophylaxis two weeks prior to her departure for Kenya and continued throughout her foreign travel. She stopped taking the pills on her arrival home because they made her nauseated. Two weeks after her return, she develops paroxysmal fever and diaphoresis and is quickly hospitalized with febrile convulsions, jaundice, and anemia. Blood smears reveal red blood cells multiply infected with delicate ring-like trophozoites and rare sausage-shaped gametocytes. The stage of the parasite life cycle that is responsible for the appearance of the parasites two weeks after departure from the malarious area is the A. Hypnozoic B. Sporozoite C. Exorthrocytic schizon D. Erythrocytic schizant. E. Merzoic. The correct answer is C. This patient is suffering from Plasmodium falciparum malaria acquired shortly before her departure from Kenya. Liver stages of Plasmodium are not susceptible to chloroquine killing. Because she did not continue the prophylaxis after her return to the States, those parasites were allowed to initiate all of the erythrocytic stages of the life cycle. Any erythrocytic stages generated out of the liver phase of the life cycle while she remained on prophylaxis would have been killed. Thus, the late onset of her symptoms was due to survival of exorthrocytic stages that had not yet left the liver at the time she ceased prophylaxis. Question 25. At a school nurse's request, a clinic in rural South Carolina sees a nine-year-old girl who appears listless and inattentive, although hearing and visual testing has been within normal limits. The physician finds the child thin, with the potbelly of malnutrition and orders a fecal exam and CBC. The CBC reveals a microcytic, hypochromic anemia, and the fecal exam detects brown, oval nematode eggs approximately 65 microns in size, too numerous to count. What was the most likely means by which this child was infected? A. Ingestion of ova. B. Ingestion of larvae. C. Ingestion of cysts in muscle. 
D. Skin penetration by larvae. E. Mosquito transmission of sporozoites. The correct answer is D. This child has the typical symptoms of hookworm disease. Caused in this country usually by Nicator americanus. The infection is acquired by penetration of the filariform larvae through the skin of the feet or buttocks, after contamination of soil with the eggs of the agent deposited in human feces. Question 26. An HIV-positive patient with a CD4 plus count of 47 presents with diarrhea. Acid fast structures are found in the stool. From this finding, which of the following is true? A. Infection is short-lasting and self-resolving and requires no treatment. B. If treated with antibiotics, the infection should resolve in 3 to 6 days. C. Infection will resolve only with a combination of anti-tuberculous drugs, and then it may take weeks. D. Infection could have been prevented by avoiding cat feces and undercooked or raw meat. E. Even with the best treatment, the infection may be unrelenting. The correct answer is E. The described infection could be Cryptosporidium, Isospora. Microsporidia, or Cyclospora, which are very difficult infections in AIDS patients even though they are self-resolving in normal non-compromised individuals. In AIDS patients they are most commonly unrelenting, even with treatment. They are usually acquired from water. Toxoplasma, choice deeds from cats. Question 27. A 24-year-old preemie Paris woman in her eighth month of gestation develops a positive um titer to Toxoplasma gondii for the first time. She should be advised by her physician that a. This child and all future fetuses are likely to be infected. b. A newborn with a positive anti-toxoplasma egg response should be treated with antiparasitics. c. Future infections can be avoided by proper vaccination and worming of cats. d. Retinocoroiditis can be prevented by drug treatment of an infant with a positive on response. e. Major organ damage can be reversed by prompt treatment of the newborn. The correct answer is d. The positive arm titer arising in the eighth month means that this woman has become acutely infected with toxoplasma. Infections acquired at this time have a high likelihood of infecting the fetus and are most likely to be manifested by the development of retinocoroiditis. A mother can transmit this parasite to her fetus only during an acute infection, therefore, all future fetuses will be protected from the disease. Question 28. A 35-year-old captain in the Army Reserves has been plagued by a painful, erosive lesion near his ear lobe since his return from Operation Desert Storm several years ago. He denies exposure to the toxic byproducts of burning oil fields. Punch biopsy of the leading edge of the erosion reveals macrophages distended with ovalomastigotes. How was this infection acquired? A. Contact with contaminated drinking water. B. Bite of Anopheles mosquito. C. Bite of reduvied bug. D. Fecal contamination of food. E. Direct human contact in barracks. F. Bite of sandfly. G. Bite of tsetse fly. The correct answer is F. Leishmania SPP. Are transmitted by the bite of sandflies. They cannot be transmitted from person to person by trivial means, so unless organ transplantation is occurring in the barracks, direct human contact, choice E, is not a possibility. To survive outside the human host, they must be in the vector, sandfly, so transmission by food or water, choices A or D, is not possible. Question 29. A group of six college students undertake to climb Mount Rainier outside Seattle on their spring break. They pack food and camping provisions except for water, which they obtain from the many freshwater mountain streams that arise at the summit. The adventure takes a little over a week to accomplish, and all return safely in good spirits to their classes the following week. Within the first week after their return, five of the six students report to the infirmary with profuse diarrhea and tenesmus. Each affected student experiences weakness and weight loss, and stool samples submitted to the lab are yellow, greasy, and foul-smelling. What attribute of this parasite imparts its pathogenicity? A. Lytic enzymes. B. Flagella. C. Ventral sucking disc. D. Encystment. E. Toxic metabolites. The correct answer is C. Jardia is common in mountain streams throughout the U.S. And the presentation of prolonged fatty diarrhea and weight loss is pathognomonic. It causes its pathology by its adherence to the mucosa of the upper small intestine with its ventral sucking disc. No toxic metabolites or lytic enzymes are involved in the pathology, which apparently results from blockage of normal fat digestion. The organism is a flagellate, and thus has flagella, but migration into extra-intestinal sites is not a well-known problem associated with pathology. And although the organism does insist as it passes along the intestine, this is not known to produce symptoms. Question 30. 
after one week vacationing in Mexico, a 14-year-old girl presents with abdominal pain, nausea, bloody diarrhea, and fever. Stool specimens are collected and sent to the laboratory for bacteriologic and parasitologic examination. Bacterial cultures are negative for intestinal pathogens. The laboratory report reveals organisms with red blood cells inside them. The most likely causal agent is a. Cryptosporidium imparvum, b. Anamoeba histolytica, c. Giardia lamblia, d. Toxoplasma gondii, e. Gigella dysenterii. The correct answer is b. The clues are bloody diarrhea, fever, bacterial cultures negative. Organisms with RBCs inside them. Cryptosporidium parvum, choice A, is typically found in AIDS patients. Giardia lamblia, choice C, is associated with fatty, foul-smelling diarrhea. Toxoplasma gondii, choice D, would likely cause a flu-like illness in this age group if acquired as primary infection. If acquired in utero, might cause blindness later in life. You can rule out Shigella dysenteriae, choice E, because bacterial cultures were negative. Question 31. Four weeks after his arrival from Egypt, a 24-year-old graduate student presents with blood in his urine. Microscopic examination of his urine reveals the presence of eggs with terminal spines. In the interview he admits that he has been working on his family's rice field occasionally since his early childhood. The most likely etiologic agent of his complaint is A. Anamoeba histolytica B. Fasciolopsis buski C. Schistosoma hematobium D. Schistosoma japonicum E. Schistosoma mansani The correct answer is C. The clues are Egypt, blood in urine, eggs with terminal spines, working in rice field, indicates his possible exposure to contaminated water. Question 32. A 30-year-old woman presents to her gynecologist with complaints of vaginal itching and a frothy, yellow discharge. She also complains of painful urination. She admits to being sexually active with several men in the past two weeks. Cultures are negative for bacterial growth, but organisms are visible via a wet prep on low power. The most likely causal agent is a. Congida albicans. B. Trichophyton rubrum. C. Chlamydia trachomatis. D. Trichomonas vaginalis. E. Giardia lamblia. The correct answer is D. The clues are frothy, yellow discharge, itching, organisms identified on wet mount, bacterial cultures were negative. With congida albicans, choice A, the discharge would have been white and creamy. Trichophyton, choice B, causes skin, hair, and nail infections and is a cutaneous fungus. Chlamydia trachomatis, choice C, would not be visible on wet mount and causes intracellular infection of epithelial cells. Giardia lamblia, choice E is associated with diarrhea. Question 33. A 30-year-old missionary comes to the emergency department complaining of high fever, chills, severe headache, and confusion. He has recently returned from Africa. A peripheral blood smear reveals multiple ring structures and crescent-shaped gametes. Which of the following organisms is the most likely cause? A. Leishmania species. B. Plasmodium falciparum. C. Plasmodium malariae. D. Plasmodium ovale. E. Plasmodium vivax. The correct answer is B. The clues are missionary, high fever, chills, Africa, multiple ring structures, and crescent-shaped gametes. Leishmania, choice A, produces amastigotes inside phagocytic cells and causes either visceral, cutaneous, or mucocutaneous pathology. Plasmodium malariae, choice C, clues might include bar and band forms in RBCs, and 72-hour fever spikes. In P. Valley and P. Vivax, choices D and E, there will be Schufner dots in RBCs. Question 34. A three-year-old girl presents to her pediatrician with intense perianal itching. Her mother explains that the child has also been extremely irritable during the day and has not been sleeping well at night. Eggs with a flattened side were identified by the laboratory technician from a piece of scotch tape brought in by the parent. Infection with which of the following organisms is most likely? A. Ascaris lumbricoides. B. Echinococcus granulosus. C. Anamoeba histolytica. D. Anaerobius vermicularis. E. Trichurus trichura. The correct answer is D. The clues are perianal itching, irritable during the day, not sleeping at night, eggs with flattened side, and scotch tape test. Question 35. A 12-year-old girl from Guatemala was brought to the emergency room with a prolapsed rectum. Examination of the rectum reveals small worms that resemble whips attached to the mucosa. 
a stool sample reveals eggs that are barrel-shaped, with bipolar plugs. Which of the following is the most likely cause? A. Ascaris lumbricoitus. B. Echinococcus granulosus. C. Anamoeba histolytica. D. Anaerobius vermicularis. E. Trichuris tracheura. The correct answer is E. The clues are tropical country, prolapsed rectum, worms resembling whips, barrel-shaped eggs with bipolar plugs. The common name for trichuris is whipworm. Question 36. A 28-year-old known alcoholic man presents with fever and productive cough. He was basically well until three days ago when he noticed perspiration, cough, shaking chills, and headache. His cough has been associated with the production of a yellowish-green sputum, which occasionally was tinged with brownish streaks, but was not foul-smelling. A gram stain shows gram-positive cocci in pairs and short chains. What laboratory tests could you use to identify the genus? The correct answer is catalase test, negative, to genus. Question 37. A 28-year-old known alcoholic man presents with fever and productive cough. He was basically well until three days ago when he noticed perspiration, cough, shaking chills, and headache. His cough has been associated with the production of a yellowish-green sputum, which occasionally was tinged with brownish streaks, but was not foul-smelling. A gram stain shows gram-positive cocci in pairs and short chains. When plated on blood agar, what other bacterium might you isolate and confuse the causal agent with, and why? What test could distinguish the two? The correct answer is viridin strep, optochin and bile. Question 38. A 28-year-old known alcoholic man presents with fever and productive cough. He was basically well until three days ago when he noticed perspiration, cough, shaking chills, and headache. His cough has been associated with the production of a yellowish-green sputum, which occasionally was tinged with brownish streaks, but was not foul-smelling. A gram stain shows gram-positive cocci in pairs and short chains. What procedure would you perform to type the isolate? The correct answer is quellung reaction with known antibodies to capsule, not antibodies to cell wall antigens. Question 39. The patient in case of developed meningitis and died. What would be the expected CSF cell count? The correct answer is CSF cell count is high. Question 40. The patient in case of developed meningitis and died. What would be the expected CSF protein and sugar values? The correct answer is protein high, sugar low. Question 41. Case C, a 46-year-old, HIV-positive man complains of malaise, weight loss, fever, and night sweats of six weeks duration. More recently, he has developed a cough productive of bloody sputum. Physical exam reveals. Bronchial breath sounds with crepitant rails over the right upper chest. His CD4 cell count is 560 cell slash M3. Oramine rhodamine stain of the sputum is positive, and a chest radiograph reveals hyalolymphadenopathy with a small cavity and streaky infiltrates in the upper lobe. What attribute of the most likely causal agent promotes its survival in reticuloendothelial cells? The correct answer is sulfatides are sulfolipids which hydrolyze to make sulfuric acid. They impede the fusion of lysosomes with the phagosome. Question 42. A 46-year-old, HIV-positive man complains of malaise, weight loss, fever, and night sweats of six weeks duration. More recently, he has developed a cough productive of bloody sputum. Physical exam reveals bronchial breath sounds with crepitant rails over the right upper chest. His CD4 cell count is 560 cell slash M3. Oramine rhodamine stain of the sputum is positive, and a chest radiograph reveals hyalolymphadenopathy with a small cavity and streaky infiltrates in the upper lobe. What attribute of the causal agent is injected in order to elicit a positive skin test? The correct answer is tuberculin, outermost protein, plus mycolic acids, long-chain fatty acids in the envelope. Question 43. A 46-year-old, HIV-positive man complains of malaise, weight loss, fever, and night sweats of six weeks duration. More recently, he has developed a cough productive of bloody sputum. Physical exam reveals bronchial breath sounds with crepitant rails over the right upper chest. His CD4 cell count is 560 cell slash M3. Oramine rhodamine stain of the sputum is positive, and a chest radiograph reveals hyalolymphadenopathy with a small cavity and streaky infiltrates in the upper lobe. What immune cells are most important in the response to this agent? The correct answer is, Th1 cells and macrophages, granuloma formation. Question 44. A patient presents with multiple, crusted and oozing, honey-colored lesions. What is the skin infection? The correct answer is impetigo. Question 45. A patient presents with multiple, crusted and oozing, honey-colored lesions. What two bacteria would you expect to isolate on culture? 
The correct answer is Streptococcus pyogenes, often honey-colored crusted, and or Staphylococcus aureus, often longer-lasting vesicular or with bullae. Question 46. A patient presents with multiple, crusted and oozing, honey-colored lesions. How would you separate the two? The correct answer is catalase test positive for Staphylococcus, negative for Streptococcus. Question 47. A patient had intermittent bouts of general malaise, fever with weight loss, and progressive anemia. She presents also with a heart murmur. What additional physical sign might occur and what causes it? The correct answer is splinter hemorrhages are caused as septic emboli are thrown from heart valves. They are also seen in trichinosis and trauma. Question 48. A patient had intermittent bouts of general malaise, fever with weight loss, and progressive anemia. She presents also with a heart murmur. What is her underlying condition and what are the most commonly involved bacteria? The correct answer is, damaged heart valve, viridin streptococci, associated with bad oral hygiene or dental work, or enterococcus fecalis or E. physium if she has had bowel surgery. Question 49. A patient had intermittent bouts of general malaise, fever with weight loss, and progressive anemia. She presents also with a heart murmur. How would you distinguish the colony on blood agar? The correct answer is alpha hemolytic not inhibited by optogen, a viridin streptococcus. Question 50. A family of Christian scientists brings their youngest child to the emergency room because of fever and a stiff neck. The 18-month-old child is acutely ill with a temperature of 40.0 C, 104.0 F. CSF is gram-stained, examined in a rapid test, and also cultured. A gram stain shows pleomorphic, gram-negative rods. What laboratory test could confirm the identity of the isolate? The correct answer is meningitis screen, a series of immunologic rapid identification tests, usually A is using known antibodies, followed by growth of CSF sediment or filtrate on special media and drug susceptibilities.